Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 137 on Now You Know. So we're in England today on yes. one of the last days of our London, London journey. So we thought we'd bring you the show from here since yes. we'll probably be flying when we normally record. Yes. Uh, our sponsors today are our lovely, wonderful Patreons who without, we could not have done this trip. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Right. You guys helped us be able to do this and bring you all this awesome coverage here in Europe. So thank you mm -hmm. super much. Also brought to you by ecoware.us and we're doing an Earth Day shirt, uh, which for Earth Day, obviously. And so all the shirts sold for Earth Day will get a tree planted via the National Forest Foundation. So buy a shirt, help support the show, and plant a tree. And brought to you by the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott in Schaumburg, Illinois. It's the solar powered hotel. You stay there, use solar powered energy, charge up your car. How cool is that? Awesome. Hey everyone, Zach here. I was super fortunate to meet Alex Bangula from Electrified, one of Germany's most popular EV YouTubers. We met in Italy and I had a chance to chat with him. Here are a few highlights. All right, well, I'm so lucky to be with Alex today. Uh, I don't, I can't even pronounce the name of your uh, German YouTube channel. Can you, can you name that for me? Sure, sure, it's called Elektrisiert, which if you would want to translate it, it would mean like electrified, I guess. So it's about electric cars, surprise, surprise. Okay. That's why we're talking, right? <laughs> I'm right. happy to meet you, you know? Like, yeah, we just bumped into each other. We're here yeah. in Italy um, and uh, you, you drive a Model S. Yes. Uh, along with, I think you've got a Model 3. Yeah, we just got a Model 3, me and my business partner Chris, um, last week, mm -hmm. and now we have basically two electric company cars. Nice. Yeah. That's very nice. So, you were telling me, we were having a little chat over breakfast, that you've had some problems with Tesla, um, and especially things to do with deliveries, uh, service, stuff like that, yeah. and, you, and you're not shy about talking about it. No, when I started, I, I started the channel three years ago when I got my Model S, and my goal was just to document my experience with electric things. So whenever something good happens, I talk about that. When something bad happens, I am very fair and I talk about that. And I think it's also very important, very important for our audience yep. to always have the truth, like not like, oh, everything is always awesome, because sometimes things are not that awesome. Mm -hmm. For instance, with uh, our Model 3 delivery, it was delayed and the communication was very hard. You know, you call, you write emails and you don't really get answers oftentimes. It and is yeah. frustrating. I mean, Tesla is this company that makes this amazing product, right? But then on the other side, on the delivery side or the service side or the customer service side, there's, it's like a black hole. And it used to be different. When I got in my car three years ago, it was like this amazing delivery experience. They had so much time. When there was something with your car, you call, they pick up, you make an appointment next week and they take care of you. And obviously the company grows and they grow in sales, but the company, the structure of the company doesn't keep up, I feel like. So you think that's what's causing the problem? Is it the, the fast growth? Or what, what do you think is it the, the root of this problem? Well, because I want to solve it. I'm not. I'm not in Tesla, <laughs> so I was just speculating. Um, obviously, when you grow fast, it, it's challenging for a company mm -hmm. to, to keep up with the growth. But then you just good structure, good people, good management, and um, people are responsible and, and own up for how things should work, and you know, put systems in place that actually work. So, for instance, they're, they're tiny things. Um, when you get your, when you order your car, then the receipt shows up in your Tesla account. Okay. And once it's there. It still said, we are still writing your receipt. So I log in my account and it still says, we are writing your receipt. So I don't scroll down, but it was already there. And then I couldn't pay because I thought it's not there. And they don't send you an email when it's there. Right. It's right. just, it should update automatically that yes, it's here when somebody uploads it. Mm -hmm. Just now, tiny things like that. When you have to reach out to the company, do you feel like you have someone there that holds your hand and helps you? Or do you feel like it's like... I'm super lucky that I found that person, okay, yes, because okay. there were so many things that, so I, I mean, you are like the boss of referrals, right? But I also got like 150 referrals, and um, so I had many questions right, regarding right. that because the, the things that you write are not always 100% clear, I feel mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. So I asked questions, don't really get answers, don't really get help, and then I found this really amazing guy who was just like, I'm good, that's not my responsibility, but, but I'll take it on. you deserve answers, and I will just try to get you answers. So now I can talk to him. But that's so rare, right? I mean, you had to find that person. Yeah, it took and, me a and, year. And you're lucky, yeah, so a year, and you're lucky because you're a YouTuber, so you probably got a little extra, maybe? No, no? I, 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 that, that is kind of cool. I think the Tesla doesn't really treat us any better. They should just treat anybody 
like a customer that spent 100,000 euros. Right. So anybody that spends 100,000 euros should be like a premium customer. That's a really good point because you're absolutely right. I don't want to be treated any differently, but I want to be treated better than I am. Right. Right. Yeah, just you spend a lot of money for a car or you have more than one Tesla. Just, you know, right. that way. Right, and, and give me someone at the company who I can reach out to who will be my point person. But the, it, you found a point person, which is great, but that person kind of took, uh, went above and beyond, right? Yeah, he well, didn't have to do that. Exactly, and Not I find at all. Tesla there's a lot of people who, I think they want to go above and beyond, but they are afraid for their jobs, maybe? I feel like they're also very busy. <laughs> And it's not 100% clear what the responsibilities are. Mm -hmm. So at the delivery, there were people that are usually working marketing doing deliveries. Right. And they were not really trained to do it. And then, I'm not saying that they're like bad or lazy employees. They're but just not it's trained. just not what they do. Yeah. I mean, when we were at Tilburg, we heard that 100 employees were asked to volunteer. <laughs> um, and we talked to some of them and they're like, I didn't really want to volunteer and I didn't know what I was doing, but I did. Yeah. And then you're right. They don't really know how to help. Really great meeting you. Absolutely. Thanks great. a lot, man. Thank you. Everybody tune in to his uh, awesome YouTube channel. Well, it's German. You guys don't have to. <laughs> well, we got a lot of German viewers. Uh, like oh, okay. 40% of our viewers are European. So uh, yeah. So if you're in Germany or anywhere in Europe, tune into his channel and find out all the great information that's going on here in Europe. Because I don't know about this stuff. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you, Alex, for taking the time for your busy schedule. Alex was headed to Rome to cover the Formula E race. Most of his videos are in German, so if you speak German and you like EVs, you should really go check out his YouTube channel. So we're in this beautiful English town, Jesse, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know why I tuned it in with sentry mode, but we've been reporting on sentry mode quite a bit lately. Uh -huh. And there's been another case of sentry mode uh, actually becoming useful. Right. So. Um, it Someone back to their Escalade into a Tesla Model 3. Mm -hmm. Luckily, Sentry Mode was active, so they caught the person who did it. And the, the interesting part about this is that the guy got out of his Escalade, he went and like, looked at the car, which he had just backed into, and then he just drove off. Yeah, and uh, this wasn't just anybody. No, this was a judge. Yeah. So yeah, in Philadelphia, a judge uh, realized that he backed into somebody, got out, which you should do. Uh, looked at the dent. I guess he rubbed it a few times thinking that would maybe make it go away. Uh, he hit it pretty hard, so there's no way that was going away. Right. And instead of leaving his, you know, uh, phone number and contact information and insurance information, mm -hmm. he just drove off. Drove off. Right. But luckily, Sentry Mode caught him on film, and uh, I wonder what's going to happen to him. Right. And I mean, this Are is. Are there judges' licenses? I have no idea how the judicial system works, unfortunately. But this is just this just goes to show why sentry mode is so important. And like, you know, if there was, if this were any other car, you wouldn't have that, right? You would right. not have sentry mode. You would not have been able to catch this person. Right. You, you would have just been a hit and run accident, and exactly. your insurance would have to pay for it. Right. So luckily, sentry mode to the rescue again. Remember to turn on your sentry mode. All right. So this story is about Proterra Bus Company. They make electric buses. We've reported on them before, and they've come up with a pretty cool idea. Um, if you're a municipality and you're thinking of buying a bus, what's your biggest obstacle to buying that bus? Money. Money. Right. So if you want to buy an electric bus, which costs more than a diesel bus, uh, you're probably going to say. Nope, it's too, it's out of our budget. Right. Okay. So Proterra's come up with this idea, which is they'll sell you the electric bus without the battery, mm -hmm. which means that that's comparable in price to a diesel bus. Okay. Okay. So now as a, a town, you're like, oh, okay, diesel bus, electric bus. Yeah. But now the battery, you lease from them. How much would the leasing cost? Right. Away? So the leasing basically costs about what you would have spent on diesel fuel. So a town is already ready. They've already got in their budget money every year for maintenance and diesel, mm -hmm. right? So they go, oh, okay, we can buy the bus, the electric bus at the same price as the diesel bus. Then every year, instead of paying for diesel fuel, we just pay for a battery. And we get to feel a little bit more secure because what's the biggest fear a lot of people have about electric cars? Um, usually the battery. Yeah, battery might wear out too mm -hmm. soon or whatever. So this way, Proterra has guaranteed the battery for 12 years. They have a performance guarantee and they have a midlife replacement. So basically, if the battery needs replacing any time during that 12 years, they'll just replace it. And what happens to those batteries once they replace them? So, I mean, they're still good. Yeah. They might not be good enough for a bus, but they could be used for grid storage. Right, so that's what Proterra does. They got a second life for that battery. They use them in grid storage. So it's like a win-win. So they partnered with Mitsui with a $200 million line of credit so that basically they can afford to do this. Um, and so it's a 
really cool win for municipalities. I think that Proterra has been learning from talking to different municipalities what their problems are and come up with an ingenious way to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, Proterra. Excellent. So here's some cool news. Yeah. Uh, EV registrations in the US um, more than doubled in 2018 from 2017. Wow, more than doubled. And I mean, EV registration wasn't too shabby last year. No, so in 2017, it was over, just over 100,000 uh, EVs registered. Okay. In 2018, it was 208,000 EVs registered. Now, numbers are hard unless you put them in context. Mm -hmm. So in 2018, there were 5.3 million new cars sold in the US. Okay. Passenger cars. Yep. You do the math, 208,000 divided by 5.3 million, that's 3.9% were EVs. In the United States? In the United States. Now that number hardly ever gets reported that way, and I think it's because they take all the cars, including the, the, the trucks and, and, and the vans and the, you know, and they lump them all together. So if we're looking at strictly passenger cars, mm -hmm. which is the majority of EVs are passenger cars. Right. Um, mostly, mostly because the majority the Model of, 3. of Model 3 is the majority of electric cars. Right. Um, we're looking at four, almost 4%? Yeah. And I just think that that is pretty incredible, especially the doubling part is incredible. Part oh, because, I mean, of course. Because normally if something goes up, let's say 10% a year, you're like, whoa, we're onto something. Right, but I mean, also the doubling, you know, if it's so small, if it's like, oh, we sold one car last year, and then this year we sold two, it's not that impressive. Right. But when we're talking about up, getting up to 4%, um, and the growth is still doubling, um, you know, and this is... 2017 to 2018. I mean, I know we didn't imagine. Really, I know. Imagine when we start seeing the 2019 numbers. Right, because the Model 3 was only selling in full capacity, really, for half of that year. Exactly. Um, and there weren't too many other. I mean, what other EVs were you really going to buy? You could it, maybe buy the Bolt, but right. the Bolt sales have been pretty flat at about a thousand level a month. and flat. Yep. And in terms of SUVs, there's really only the Model X. And that's a luxury SUV. Right. So, I mean, wait till we see the Model Y mixed in with this. Right. You know, and the Kona and other, you know, more affordable SUVs. Well, and the Kona's great, and I totally agree it's an SUV, but you hardly see it in the U.S. They, it's a compliance car, so they're right. barely selling them at all. Right. Now, the interesting thing is if you look at the numbers in terms of uh, where these new car sales were, 6 in 10 were from what you can expect, California and the other zero emission states. So, that's California, Connecticut, Maine. Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, and Vermont. But four out of ten, that means, came from states that weren't in the zero emissions program, which I find kind of positive. That's awesome. All right, so some interesting news from Toyota mm -hmm. at the uh, recent uh, auto show. Uh, they show, showed off this car here, which is the same car. It's called the CHR, but also it's called the Izoa. What's confusing is that one car is branded Toyota and the other is branded uh, with their GAC counterpart. They, they partnered with the Chinese counterpart. I see, yeah. All right, so what, looking at this ad here, what do you think is different about this, this ad from other EVs we've seen recently? Um, it's very... Sporty. I mean, I've seen similar-ish ads where it's very millennial, very, um, you know, hip and new, and they're not really talking about too much other than it's a, it's a neat car. You know, it's a typical kind of car commercial. Yeah, stuff. I mean, there's two things that caught me, right? One is that it's very millennial-driven. Like, mm -hmm. their point, that this is definitely aimed at the millennial market. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that they don't talk about anything to do with it being clean. It's just cool. They don't... It's well, just like they they can't talk about it being clean because it's Toyota. Toyota sells, of course, tons of not very clean cars. Um, you know, not that they're worse than any other gas cars, but they're still gas cars. And if right. you start talking about how clean, um, you know, this car is, you completely have Fight to your other you're, you're fighting your other brands because then people are really, like, oh, okay, I'll get this clean car instead of this. Wait a minute, you know. Why, why would I buy another Toyota if I want to buy a clean car? Right. I also find it interesting that Toyota um, is, their electric division is now headed up by the, I think it's like the great, great, great grandson of the original Toyota. Hmm. Um, and he's younger, mm -hmm. and maybe he gets it, which would be cool. I hope so. Now, there's no plans for this car to be released outside of China, which is interesting to me. So far, no mention of any other global markets mm -hmm. other than China, which points to the fact that I think even Toyota gets it. China is the fastest growing EV market, right. and therefore, start, start there. Know, yeah, you can make way more mistakes in China, um, I think, just because, I mean, A, electric cars are so popular there, um, B, 
you don't necessarily, you know, the, the brand doesn't really escape China. So, I mean, if, if it's a terrible car and everyone hates it. No one will know about it. No one outside of China will really know about it. Um, and C, a lot of cars in China are really, really crappy. No. So, you know, if you have a crappy car, it's going to be kind of a wash with everything else. So there's word out uh, from Electric that there's going to be a refresh for the Model S and X battery pack now. And so you reported a couple weeks that S and X are going to be getting a refresh of what? Uh, the motors. So the, that the motors were actually going to be permanent magnet motors, a lot like what is in the Model 3, okay. if not some of the exact same motors. Or, very similar motors. Right, and that's probably to, to for reduced costs and also because they're very efficient, right? right. In, in stop and go traffic, they're like 97% efficient right. versus Model S and X now with a um, about 93 93% efficient. Right. All right, so the refresh we're talking about now would be the battery pack, mm -hmm. um, which if we believe electric um, and the sources that Fred has would be upgrading to 2170 batteries, which totally makes sense, right? Because the Model 3 can get charge rates up to 250 kilowatts, right. um, and the SNX can't. Right. And why would you buy a super expensive luxury car if you can't get what the Model 3 already has? Right, yeah, I think that that, it would be a smart um, refresh. I mean, the, the, the hardest part about this is that we can't confirm anything, right. because we don't have the sources that Electric has, and Tesla hasn't said anything yet. Um, which means that we're kind of left in the, all left in, in the dark as to what's going to be happening. Um, now, there was also going to be an interior refresh. We had heard a long time ago, and again, we unconfirmed. Nobody knows if that's true or not. But the dates all seem to be converging because we've been hearing for a long time that it'd be Q3 of 2019. And lately, the dates that are being thrown around are June or July of 2019. So if all those dates seem to be coming true, that could be when the refresh comes true. And that would be important because uh, Model S and X have had a huge drop off in sales. Right. And I think that they're going to continue to have a huge drop off in sales for the next foreseeable quarter. Yeah, until the refresh happens. Yeah. So you remember Sono Motors? They're the German startup company that has the Scion, which is that solar powered uh, oh, car. Oh, yes, with the Moss. Yes. One with the Moss. That's yeah. how I remember it. And it's the one that's covered in solar panels. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, it generates, according to them, 34 kilometers a day of energy into the battery mm -hmm. uh, if you leave it in full sun. Now, I don't know if that sun is like California sun or Sweden sun, but let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. 34 kilometers a day. Absolutely. That's sure. awesome. Yes. Um, I mean, well, and on top of that, you can plug it in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can plug it so in. Yeah. It's, it's got, it's it, if you plug it in, it's got an, um, a range of 255 kilometers. So that's pretty good. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not great, but it's a good city car. Well, here's the exciting news. You've already heard about this car a lot, but you're like, okay, Zach, we've heard about it. The good news is it's actually going to start being made. Saab Motors, which is kind of defunct now, it was bought out by NEVS, which is uh, National Electric Vehicle Sweden. Mm -hmm. Primarily a Chinese company, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. But um, at the Trollhattan Sweden plant is where they'll be building the cars. And they're going to um, build 260,000 cars in the next eight years. So once they get production going, it'll hit 43,000 Scions a year. So the production will commence in the second half of 2020, so we still got a ways to wait. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that there's over 9,000 people on the waiting list for the car, so they're probably pretty happy. I think we signed up for the car too? I can't remember. It's been so long. I'm pretty sure we did. <laughs> probably make sure of that. <laughs> we should double check that. Yeah. But I think we're on the list for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so it's going to start at 25500 And in fact, I think there's only one variant to begin with, so I think that is the price. Okay. What else is there to say about it? I mean, it's 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 pretty exciting that they're finally going to be making the car. Right. This is an EV that uh, just, uh, there's no other EV, really, that can charge this much during a day using solar panels that are already on the car. I mean, yeah, sure, you could hook up you know any electric car to any kind of solar panel array and probably charge, you know, and get some similar amount of range for the amount of panels and coverage and stuff that this car has, but just having it on there, not having to think about it. Yeah. Um, when we're talking about vampire drain and stuff, like that's mm -hmm. just something that if you drive a, Sion, a Sono Scion, you're never gonna have to worry about. Right. And you're con like, instead of the, you know, and so instead of the range draining over time, it's the gaining. range is just gaining. Gaining over time instead right. of draining over time. And so I think it, it'll be a different experience so, uh, kind of electric car, like, you know, it, instead of having to be like, oh, geez, I have to charge, you might just be like, oh, I just, just leave it. Just wait in the sun. Yeah. I, what I like is that they did a really cool job. They brought the car around Europe. They let people drive it. Over 10,000 people got to drive it mm -hmm. and experience it. Um, 
is it any surprise that they have over 9,000 people signed up? Right. S- butts and seats makes a difference. It does. Anyway, really excited about this company. All right, some really big news for Tesla that just happened is the board changed. So what does this mean? And, and well, who, remember who is on the board? Okay, so you remember recently the board went up. The SEC said you got to add some more independent directors, people mm-hmm. who aren't just friends of yours, Elon. And he did. They added some more independent directors. But now, for some reason, inexplicably, we don't know why, uh, they've decided to cut the board from 11 to 7. So uh, this means that um, Brad Buss, Linda Johnson Rice, uh, Stephen Jurvetson, and Antonio Gracias will um, be leaving. So uh, the first two will be leaving right away on June 11th at the next shareholders meeting. Mm -hmm. The next two will leave at the 2020 meeting, most likely. There is another question before shareholders, which is um, cutting the period of time that you're a board member from three years to two. Mm -hmm. Again, not sure why, what's wrong with three years, don't know. So that leaves Kimball Musk, which is Elon's brother, Uh, Elon Musk. Who's Kimball's brother. Correct. Uh, Oracle Corporation founder Larry Ellison, who just joined the board. Mm-hmm. Kathleen Wilson Thompson, who is the HR executive at Walgreens Boots Alliance. Mm-hmm. She just joined. Uh, the chairperson, Robin Denholm, she stays. Um, News Corp executive James Murdoch. Yeah. Yeah, Rupert Murdoch's son. And venture investor Ira Ewan Priest. So that's kind of interesting because we've gotten, we're getting rid of a bunch of really good friends of Elon's, like, right. um, like Jurvetson. Mm-hmm. And the ones who are staying behind, I mean, obviously Robin Denholm's a really good friend, mm-hmm. but some of them, like James Murdoch and Ira, they're not like buddies. So this is kind of weakening uh, the relationship. Uh, what, between Elon Musk and his board? Yeah. I mean, like. And do we know what pushed this no, change? No. no. I'm just blind conjecture here. This is weird. That's not conjecture, that's an opinion. <laughs> but you can sustain or whatever. Yeah, I. Th- this is just. I don't understand why this is. Uh, do these four people want to leave? Their time, you know, they've got better things to do. They're sick of it. Maybe they're sick of it. But why would? Why not replace them? Why not have replacements in the wings? Right. So it, it just smacks. Here's what it smacks up to me. This is normally what happens when you're about to do a takeover. You lower the board, make room for some new board members of some mm-hmm. company that's going to come along and put their board members oh, on. Oh, wait a minute, Maxwell. Maxwell, maybe. Yeah, Why wouldn't you have just done it now? I mean, yeah, that would have been that would have made sense to put you know a couple of their board members on, but I, I don't think that's what it is. Well, but I mean, Maxwell hasn't gone through yet. No, I know, but I'm just saying. Uh, okay, just, you think you just said acquisition? What, what do you, what do you No, I, I mean a bigger company. Oh, we're gonna scoop Apple. Up. Ugh. I know it's not what I'm looking forward to, that but I'm just saying that's. Terrible. It would be, but that's the only thing I can think of. You're taking the most innovative company. I hear you. I'm not in it. Don't want to do it. You're going to have the. They're going to get rid of the charging port. I'm not I'm not talking about that. I want it. I'm just saying this is weird. It's super weird. I don't know. Comment below if you can figure this out. I haven't figured it out yet. All right, it's time for the lightning round. So GM has filed for a trademark, the Bolt EUV. No, they shouldn't have done. That's a bad name for the EV. Why? They got, they got rid of the Volt, so now there's no more confusion. You say Bolt, and everyone just knows you're talking about Bolt. Jolt. Call it the Jolt. What is the EUV? What does that stand for? The European Uber vehicle. <laughs> I, no, the EU. I don't know what. What is an EUV? Uh, an electric utility vehicle? I guess. Yeah. So. But this is cool. This means that GM might come out with a bigger version of the Bolt, probably. All right, so 18 months ago, GM came out with this statement. In the next 18 months, GM will introduce two new all-electric vehicles based off learnings from the Chevrolet Bolt EV. So that was 18 months ago. Okay. That means that right now there should be a new vehicle. But guess what two. GM said? Two, right? Yes, two new vehicles. But GM said, oh no, we, we have learned here are the two new vehicles, the Buick V-Lite 6 EV and the Baojun E200, which are two China-only vehicles I that are not. produced Yeah, that's why I've not seen them. Right. So check this out, Jesse. Picture here of the Tesla Gigafactory 3. Uh, oh this is in gosh. Shanghai. Yeah. It, look at that. They're going to catch up to the Gigafactory 1 pretty soon. Like, yeah, in it's terms crazy of how, how fast they're building. That's insane. I mean, so this is not on Elon time. This is on Shanghai time. Yeah. This is some serious, serious building speed. Yeah. You go to China and you're like, hey, I want to build a factory. And they're like, we are good at building <laughs> factories. Let's get you Boom. a factory. <laughs> well, this is exciting. Mm-hmm. 
the uh, the loop, the East Coast loop in the United States, is one step closer to getting its government approvals. So we're talking about specifically between Washington D.C. and Baltimore. Yeah, they they've gotten support for up to a thousand rides a day right in the beginning. So let's just talk about how it's going to work. Um, it's going to be an underground tunnel, thirty five miles long. 35 miles long, yep. and people are going to be traveling in modified Tesla vehicles. That's what they're saying. Something like that. Now, a lot of people are going to point to that and be like, ha ha ha, you Gotta see, buy a Tesla. You know, either the people have to buy Teslas or the people are going to have to be traveling in Teslas. It's going to be very inefficient. Why don't they just take the train? Why don't they just get on the highway? How is this going to be taking cars off the highway or, you know, making it faster than the train? And I think that they're missing... A, a point. You know what they're that. missing? 15 minutes. Right. 15 minutes. If you make this trek right now, see if you live anywhere else, you're like, I don't even know what that means. But if you are talking about DC to, to, to Baltimore, you're like, wait, what? 50, did you just say 15 minutes? And get there in 15, 15 minutes. minutes. And that's with just loop. Right. That's if it were not, Hyperloop, what would it be? It would be eight minutes. Eight two, minutes! Right. You'd be spending most of the time just speeding up and slowing down. Yeah. We got a story here about uh, Model 3 inventory, both new and used, being available to peruse online. Mm -hmm. um, used to be that you could only do this with a sales representative. Mm -hmm. And the reason for doing this is, you know, there's lots of cars that are inventory models and they go out for test drives, and then occasionally they become available as used. And it's a great way to snatch up a cool bargain because Tesla does discount them. Right. Um, and so now you can go online and you can actually look at them by a geographic area. Now, so far, it only seems like California is available, probably because it's the biggest market, but mm -hmm. maybe soon there'll be ones in your area. So yeah. go check it out. Maybe you'll find some cool deal. Okay, it's time for our video contributor story. And this week, we've got our buddy Eli uh, with My Tesla Adventure, and he gave us uh, we were running out of video contributor stories. Yes. Put the word out. Eli was like, I got one for you. Nice. Here it is. I've actually got so little range that I got a notification I've never had before that says, you are out of range of all known chargers. Look at this notification. All known chargers will be out of range soon. Woohoo! I'm off the grid. Meaning I'm going to run out of battery before I can get to a known charger. So check out what I have set up here. All right, so I just got here to the ranch. I've got <laughs> 33 miles of range. All right, so I'm just waking up. Let's find out what my range is for my overnight charge in this little 112. Let's go take a look. Okay, we are currently at 78 miles. All right, we're gaining, we're gaining. So I got here at about 7.30 on Friday night. It is now about 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Let's check it out and see how much charge we got from this 120 volt. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> we are at 162 miles. Sweet. So I've got more than enough power to get back to my destination. I have more than enough power to get to the next supercharger. And I did it all off just a day and a half plugged into a regular 120 volt. Uh, and in fact, I wasn't even getting 120 volt. I was getting about 116 volts. Um, still not an issue. Charge between three and four miles per hour for most of the duration. Especially with Tesla's electric car, the electric car thing, going distances, long trips, it's really not an issue. Like this is the first time in probably a year I've needed to charge not even add a supercharger and even when you need to it's not it's it's not a problem the charging mechanism is not a reason not to buy an electric car if you can afford to get a tesla nice and just keep in mind that you know we are still running out of video contributor yeah. stories every week we have one fewer right um so we hadn't piled up for a while maybe you guys were just like forgot or something but we, hey, we get out there asking there's people. a lot of things in the world going on get out there with your cameras and your microphones yeah. and figure it out we can't be in every place at once no we can't we're busy people all right, it's time for the Patreon bonus story. Now, if you want to be a Patreon, and I know you do, you want to help us out here on the show, and I know you want to see the Patreon bonus stories, go over to Patreon, give us a buck a month, at least, and uh, you get uh, full access to all the Patreon bonus stories there ever have been. Yep. Go do it. All right, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories, and it's time to give our shout outs for the amazing people who are Patreons who give $5 or more a month. All right, we have the Nouveau Monde Graphite Incorporated Company. Yeah, remember we did a whole uh, show on them? I guess they decided to be Patreons. Wow, we've got a mine that's our Patreon. Now. That's very nice. Todd Walensky. Peter C. Patch. Ramanet Tenate. www.ecalc.ch. 
James Marquard, Merrick Christofiak, Hubert Tom, Daniel J. Fortune, Kevin Pereira, I.C. Weiner, Victor Tual, Danny Sheets, Bert Newman, Tyler Parker, Tom Zarenik. Hey, he's in our newsroom. Yep. Jan Mondale, Ann Hong, Glenn McKinlay, and A. Leonard Simon. Thank you so much, Thanks guys. Thank you so much, guys. We can't do this without you. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. And we got two this week. The first one, uh, Andrew Yang tweeted at Elon. He said, an AI system defeated elite Chinese doctors in a two-round brain tumor diagnosis competition on both speed and accuracy. This could do incredible good, but is another example of areas in which new technology is capable of beating humans. We have to evolve quickly. Elon said, I hope a cybernetic interface is ready in time. Symbiosis, irrelevance, hopefully blissful, or doom seem to be the three most likely paths. Okay, so let's just recap here. Symbiosis, that means we live happily together mm -hmm. with our AI counterparts. Yes. Irrelevance, uh, it, uh, the AI just continues doing whatever it's doing. And leaves and us it, alone? Like, well, it's, it's just like ants. Okay, it just so walks around if us. Just, if it steps on us, no uh, big deal, you know. And if we step Metaf on it. Metaphorically, okay. we don't step on, it. yeah, we can't step on the AI. And the last one is Doom. Right. Okay. So, one in three chance uh, of Doom. Uh, well, you didn't I mean, percentage. two in three chance of not great, one in three chance of pretty good. Wait, two in three chance of not great? Symbiosis is great? Irrelevance is not great, and Doom is not great. Well, I still don't see what's wrong with Irrelevance. Uh, oh, we're irrelevant? Yes. Oh, oh, well, that's not good. Okay, so two and three chances. It's weird, yeah. Sorry, I thought they were irrelevant. Okay, that's bad. All right, his next tweet. Uh, Kathy Wood said, ARK Invest research suggests that the Model 3 will generate cash flow of $10,000 per year at a minimum of an autonomous taxi platform. Tash ARK and Scroas ARK have done the research. We are happy to share it. Then Human Mahdi said, self-driving is basically here already. We just drove LA to San Diego and back and I did nothing but rest my hands on the bottom of the wheel. On-ramp to off-ramp, completely drove itself on the free freeway. Not much till it can do the same on surface streets. Elon said, yes. So, I mean, the, the big news here is that, that ARK Invest, you know Kathy Wood, she's the CIO of ARK, um, which is a huge investment firm. Um, they're really bullish on Tesla. And basically they've been doing their research saying that just like Elon said, a autonomous car is going to gain value, not lose value. Right. And so she's they're putting a number on it now. Right. And, and it'll this is generate it, a cash flow. The question is, is this car ready? Is this it? Or is there you know, is, is Elon right? Like is the hardware and stuff ready? That's what we need to find out. And the crazy part is, if it's ready, right? Yeah. And they have the hardware and everything ready. They're ready before everyone else. Yeah. All right, it's time for community mail time. Community mail time. And we're back to the original song, which a lot of people liked. Bobby, great job on the original song. Yeah, I mean, great job on the new song. Yeah, but uh, don't, people, you can't mess with perfection. Right. We've got to go back to the old song. Um, so our friend Fred, uh, he, you remember him? He came up with a bunch of cool things. MoreTesla.com. Mm -hmm. Also came up with the version of uh, was it Star Blaster, the first game that Elon came up with, he yep. came up with the version that you can play. He came up with a new game for us. Okay. Uh, this is a new game that he's developed, which you can play on the browser in the Model 3 if you want to. Um, it's called Infinity Work, the reality game. And you can find it on his awesome site, moretesla.com. You just, uh, well, you just go here to the link. And uh, you can play it in the Tesla browser and use your phone as the controller. And some uh, fun news from our friend Somi. Uh, she just got her uh, Model 3, she's been waiting for it, she said, for 30 years. Does that sound like someone you know? You, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for 30 years for, for Sparky. Right. She I was mean, waiting too. You weren't waiting for Sparky for 30 years. I kind you of. You were just waiting for an electric car that you could well, yeah. live with. You were waiting for the, the GM the, 1, right? Yeah, the, the EV1. EV1. Yeah, right. they crushed them all. Anyway, she got her story retweeted by Tesla. She said, waited over 30 years for today, ever since I saw an electric car on TV in the 80s, and I said, I'm buying one of those if I ever get the chance. Today I make good on that teenager's promise. Bucket list item, check. Thank you to the amazing Tesla team and to Elon Musk. All right, we're in Europe. Uh, we're going to have to skip the on-air question this week. Yes. It's just, it's just crazy to try and 
do we're, we're we're basically in the middle of packing for our trip home so yes we, we just can't make it this week but we will get to you guys next week all right it's time for supercharger reviews let's let's let, let's let other people take it for, yeah. for a minute hi i'm at the 12 stall supercharger in san marcos texas um it's right off of i-35 it was uh, really easy to get to um super convenient uh right behind me is the san marcos outlets uh there's lots of shopping and things to do while you wait there's also a hotel here uh there's a laquina right over there um, all in all I'd give this place a 8 out of 10 um, there's not really a lot of great restaurants uh, but other than that it's a great spot hi Zach and Jesse this is a review of the Scotch Corner Supercharger which is uh, in the car park of the Holiday Inn Darlington there's also destination chargers here but they're in the disabled spots so I'd ask before using them uh, inside the hotel itself, there's this uh, bar which serves coffee, um, which was very nice and very well kept toilets. Um, we didn't eat any food there, but perhaps they do serve some. If you uh, turn left uh, past the bar and walk down the corridor, there is a restaurant, Fratello's, that serves breakfast and dinner. Again, we didn't eat there, but as you can see, it looks like a very pleasant place to be. The one downside to the supercharger, I would say, is that it's out of the way of pretty much anything else. There are other services at the other side of this gigantic roundabout, but they'd be about five minutes walk away. Hello, and welcome to the 8-stall supercharger in Sherburn, Minnesota. In southern Minnesota, it's just off I-90 as you're going east and west across the lower part of the state. It's at a come-and-go gas station with a subway built in. It's right off the highway, real simple to find. A little exposed to the wind and elements if it's a cold or windy day, but otherwise a nice stop. As more and more Teslas are getting on the road, this is the perfect kind of quick stop that I think will be really useful on those busy road trip weekends. Not a lot of lodging around, but this is a nice simple stop right off the highway with restrooms, snacks, coffee in the service station. We're in the Italian Riviera going to a supercharger in Varazze. All right, so uh, there's only two superchargers that we can park at, but both are taken up with Model 3s. This is so exciting. Yay! Being used properly. We're at the Varazze supercharger in Italy on the Italian Riviera. And if you can see behind me, we have got two Italian Model 3s that are supercharging in the only two um, supercharger stalls that are available for superchargers for, for Model 3s. Then we've got the regular stalls here. So we've got six regular stalls. You can see Model S is charging. Um, but these two, it's so good to see that not only are these Model 3s, but these are Italian Model 3s. You can tell by the front of their license plates, they've got uh, the I there for Italy. And so we're driving a Swedish Model 3. These two are Italian Model 3s. I gotta give this a supercharger big thumbs up because it is right on the Italian Riviera um, and it's got places for Model 3. So I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 because I mean, come on, it's the Italian Riviera. Definitely a place to stop by and charge in Varazze, Italy. Thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Those you go, you go out great. there in the world, you cover things for us, you let people know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I tried to cover some when I was on the European trip with some, some superchargers. I'll nice. try and have the boys upload some of those so you nice. can find them. Nice. All right, and uh, we got some new superchargers this week. What do we got, Jess? We got the 10 stall in Gainesville, Florida. So the 8 stall in Ture, Sweden. Number 270 in China, the 6 stall at Jingdezhen, Shishan Lake, Gloria Resort, China. The 18 stall in Edigem, Belgium. Number 448 in Europe, the 16 stall in Leiderndrop, Netherlands. The 8 stall Urban in Santa Fe, Mexico. The 8 stall in Haiyuan, Katingzia, China. And number 632 in the US, number 1518 in the world is the 18 Urban Supercharger in Arlington, Virginia. All right, for Be Free this week, we've got Jaffrey Pizza Barn in Jaffrey, New Hampshire. You get 25% off if you're an Elon employee. So wow. if you're hanging out in Jaffrey, New Hampshire for some reason, maybe on your way somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you'd be in Jaffrey, New Hampshire, but off. maybe it's worth the trip. I mean, yeah. go for a vacation in New Hampshire. Nice. Get your pizza, Jaffrey Pizza Barn. All right, it's time for the Patreon giveaway. Um, where'd you pack the, um, the big, the big wheel thing? You, you were supposed to pack it. No, I, I only brought a carry-on, so. I couldn't fit that in my carry-on. All right, so we're gonna have to, um, boys, spin the thing and 
put the name right here. All right, they're gonna get an EcoWare t-shirt. EcoWare t-shirt. Which, uh, you know, supports the show. Right, you can so, get one just in time for Earth Day. That's hopefully. right. All right, you made it to the end plate. Thank you very much Thank for, you so for, much for hanging watching. out watching the show. This is, I know it was a weird show this week. At least we stayed on the right side of the screen. Uh, we were almost gonna do it in reverse. And we know how that throws off the time-space continuum when we do that, so mm -hmm. we stuck to that. Yeah. Um, but remember, last time we did a show like this, I think it was about a year ago, we were in Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, and we yes. did the show from the hotel there. I think we did a little bit better job in Copenhagen, I must than say. Than here? Yeah. Why? Yeah. We had our whole show all set up. We didn't record it in different places. It was all- I like the different places. We sat there, we had a bunch of, we, we, all the, we were pointing all the lights in the hotel room at ourselves, and it was, I, we I, had a desk. For, we don't have a desk. We don't have anything. <laughs> this is- this is pretty front running gun. Holding <laughs> chairs, I mean, woof. Hey, at least we're pulling it off. And we, yeah, I mean, the whole point here is that we always have Test of Time news coming out on Monday. Yeah, and, 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 and quality. And depth on Tuesday, right. 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 I mean, we're, we're doing our best. We are doing our best. It's hard, you know, I've been on the road now for three weeks and uh, it's been hard to to do. I mean, right. you, you just joined and, it's 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 hard. It's been it, hard doing it, it alone too. It's hard. So, yeah. Luckily, exactly. luckily, next week is going to be back to normal. We're going to be back in our nice uh, video studio. We're going to have all of our lights. We're going to have our camera. We're going to have our teleprompter. We're going to have our nice solar desk and all of the fun stuff. And we and we still us. have some new episodes of the Euro Trip coming out because yes. I was sending them back to the boys to edit, and we're on like episode six or seven coming out soon. Um, there's going to be an exciting since you made it to the end. Mm -hmm. We're going to some secrets here. Um, you're well. I'm not even going to give it away, but. There's gonna be. You should tell. No, there's. It's too exciting. I can't leak it yet. But on the next episode, you're gonna see that I got to meet someone really super exciting, um, and I'm just really stoked about it. So that's coming up on the Euro trip. I think we did a lot of good on the Euro trip. I, I was really surprised at how easy it was to travel through Europe. Um, we've been a little bit down on London now that we've been here. I think I can speak for you um, because it smells. I mean, it's really diesely. It's very diesely. I mean, it's a wonderful city. I'm it, not yeah. putting down the city. Well, it's diesely, smoky. Very smoky. A lot of people smoke cigarettes. Smoky. Not a lot of EVs. I oh. saw one Ubitricity charger, which was really cool. Yep. Um, there are some of those London cabs, but not many that are electric. And right. there are very, there's a couple buses that we got to go on that are electric buses. And that, I mean, hey, that's cool. But again, once they all go, and look, right. let me tell you something. When London goes all electric, I will want to live here because it's a great it's city a other than city, right. the, the sootiness. Uh, once you get rid of the diesel and the congestion, also, well, once the city goes fully autonomous and there's no more traffic in the city, well, I can have high hopes. I'll be happy with, I'll be happy with all electric. I'll uh, be happy. I mean, it's it'll be quieter. I mean, when there are no cars in the streets, you're just like, yeah. Huh. Electric buses are awesome. And when everyone quits smoking. I think that was my first electric bus. It was. Yeah, it was my first. It was fantastic because the other buses, the other diesel uh, double deckers, you see, <laughs> it, they shake. Exactly. The this electric was not a double decker, but no, yeah. but soon, soon they will. Soon, be. soon, soon. All right, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the show. We appreciate it, and we'll see you next week. Now, now you know. know.